Anybody that believes what the left believes is absolutely on the side of evil. Absolutely. Just like anybody who sits through a top of the hour ad break. My man is dripped up, by the way. Can we just point out? Homie's got the true religion uh, drip set. Are those Rockin' Republic? Oh my fucking God. I wonder if it's like a discontinued brand now. He's got that Hank Hill ass too. Love that. All right, top of the hour ad break. Boom. America may fall one day, but it will not fall to Joe Biden. Trump will be back, whatever that looks like. QAnon runs on the tracks that faith has laid. I watched the clips myself. It's firsthand information. It scares the shit out of me. So QAnon is making you guys look like crackpots. <sighs> I, I don't think that's an unfair estimation. Could it be that you're wrong? No, absolutely not. The mysterious figure behind QAnon, the sprawling conspiracy theory that holds that the world is controlled by satanic pedophiles, hasn't been heard from in almost a year. And Trump, who fanned the flames of Q, hasn't been in office in 10 months. Yet the wild theories that have helped fuel the movement live on, undaunted by logic, truth, or reality. The world goes under a deep state Illuminati possession. What next? Shut your churches down? The pedophiles, the Satanists. Take your kids out of your home? With their wicked plots. Rape your wife? You think we are on the losing side? Well, you better look at history. Put you in a concentration camp? Since its emergence in 2017, QAnon has used myriad channels to spread its wild theories, most of them online. Now, the movement has found other ways to radicalize new believers, notably evangelical churches. A recent study found that as many as one in four white evangelicals believe in core tenets of QAnon. The main guy at QAnon is also running for uh, Arizona State Senate, right? Ron Watkins who most people believe is like the current iteration of Q, like who the Q is at the moment. Seriously, how is the level of delusion these people display not an actual mental illness? I need to an answer and how people can be like this. No, it is mental illness. There's definitely like some untreated mental illness playing a part in this. Come on, bro. Like at this stage, like if you believe this level of fucking, you, you are in a, I mean, this is like, you are literally, you have, yeah, severe paranoia is one of them. Um, but there is so much, there's so much denial going on. Like you're, you're just like refusing to recognize the truths in front of your eyes. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. Like you're just. We're on the outskirts of Nashville, Tennessee at the Global Vision Bible Church. This is a church run by a man named Pastor Greg Locke. The parking lot is filled to capacity. The tent is crowded. Now, Pastor Locke exists square in the middle of the Venn diagram between right-wing politics and evangelical Christianity. He's really leaning into the notion of a stolen election. Like, I, I, feel, I feel like, you know, neurotypical people fall into this trap too. But what I'm trying to say is like, I feel as though it becomes derangement to a degree where it is like, like, I feel like it's like PTSD, right? Like PTSD is a disorder that you get later on in life from your experiences or early on in life from your prior experiences. And this is, Similar to that. I don't know what the scientific term would be for it, but it's like shit take. Like it is definitely a mental disorder that you fucking have when even if you're like neurotypical or whatnot, it doesn't matter. Like you are literally becoming deranged by uh constantly being uh, involved in this kind of activity and like constantly getting that. If you think that that's a bad take or a shit take, I don't know what to tell you, by the way. Like you think these guys are just like fucking. Like this is a, a, a delusion that you are. Uh, that you are personally getting fucking. Like personally invested in. It's just not like, I don't think it's genetic is what I'm saying.
It may just be a type of OC becoming obsessed with the ideas and beliefs that people are being... No, 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 no. The past trauma creates symptoms of PTSD, depression, anxiety, extreme fear, and other experiences. Neurodivergency includes PTSD, depression, anxiety, and such. Yeah, even if you don't have, like, anything... Even if you're not neurodivergent, you become neurodivergent because of this. There is no... There is no way that you can tell me that a fucking dude who unironically believes that, like, Donald Trump is still the president is not, like, in some way having issues, okay? Like, that dude is having issues. Okay? That's not, like... Not everything is working in the way that it was supposed to be in that situation. Okay? That's what I mean. It's like adult-onset collective hysteria. Evil Democrats, pedophiles, elites, and his church is booming. Which, for the record, is like not dissimilar to cult brainwashing, for example, which is often very traumatic. They bombard you. They give you a sense of like, uh, you know, community. They bombard you with fucking uh, the same kind of uh, propaganda over and over and over again until you like believe it. And it's the exact same shit. It is a cult. Does that make sense? Not a bad take, but those people, but people whose minds are extreme can probably be bent the other way as well. It's just what they're consuming. The it's not a neurodivergency, but these people do become neurodivergent. And so we grew numerically from about three, 350. Like, what are you guys worried about? Like fucking saying that these people are neurodivergent so you can't fucking bully them or something? Cause I'm going to keep bullying them. I don't care. Like I'm going to keep making fun of them. Is that the reason why some of you guys are like straight up trying to, uh, you know, not admit that there's like neurodivergence or running rampant in that crowd? Like, you can't tell me that someone who believes that like there's a fucking pedophilic, uh, satanic vampire uh, group running the fucking government is like a thing that uh, is is. Something that are, like a like, collectively believing in that and getting angry over it and being like insanely paranoid as a consequence of like that information. You can't tell me that that is like not neurodivergent to a degree that uh, you personally got uh, sucked into. Some of them are, and then some of them are regular old anti Semites. That's true. D to about 1200 within 15 months. Locke has amassed millions of followers on social media, 2.2 million on Facebook alone, while railing against things like COVID masks, the fraudulent election, and pedophiles. Love you, bro. I get what you're saying, but saying anyone who's seen as crazy must be developing a neurodivergence is kind of harmful, in my opinion, being neurodivergent. No, when I say that they're neurodivergent, or when they're becoming that, what I'm simply stating is that they are still victims in that situation. There's, but like that's not gonna stop me from making fun of them though. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm, I mean I I admit that there is like a, a a varying degree of ableism that everyone engages in. I myself engage in it regularly. Um, and this is within the realm of that degree of ableism. It is ableist to make fun of Trump supporters. Yes, like. Or, or these people. It is kind of ableist to make fun of these people. Right? And I am ableist. I'm engaging in an ableist act there. Kind of like when I say someone is stupid or brain dead or have a smooth brain like a grape or um, what else? Or saying someone is a moron. Like people's cognitive functions are, are diminished is like a pejorative. People use it all the time because it is a pejorative. Or, um, my point is everyone engages in ableism to a certain degree. It's just a part of, uh, you know, it's a part of the language. Um, and that's it. That's basically it. Is it able to make fun of Kanye? A little bit. Yay. But, you know, an acceptable level of it. Files, which he claims are everywhere. 
particularly on the left and in the halls of power. We got a buck wild government. Yes, we do. Demonic. While he says that he's not a follower of Q, this is all classic QAnon stuff. I've told you the whole time. Like saying everyone engages in transphobia is part of language. I do say that. I said acceptable levels of ableism. That's why I didn't say that it's okay to say, call them the R word. That's the point. And also, yes, uh, you know, there is a, a level of transphobia in like, baked into uh, just everyday language because it does not cover non-binary uh, folks who are also under the trans umbrella. This election was fraudulent. We got so much proof. The only people that can deny it are crack smoking, demon possessed leftists. Like Evangelicals have been a powerful force in GOP politics for years. But faced with a changing nation, the church is finding itself older and whiter than the rest of the country. Fearing diminished influence, many pastors are grasping for answers and finding them in conspiracy theories. People like, do you honestly believe that the military uncovered tunnels beneath the Capitol building and beneath the White House and in the five-fingered lakes? Do you really believe that they found kids? Yeah, both live ones and dead ones. And if you try to keep that on the DL, you're what? just as complicit as Hunter Biden and the rest Oh my God, I didn't know that he did that. That's awesome, dude. This guy's like a total fucking... He is like off the chain like he he has lost the plot entirely i didn't realize i thought he was just like regular you know don't wear a mask it's demon shit like i didn't realize he was like nah there's like actual tunnels under the white house where there's like dead babies a bunch of crack smoking perverts <laughs> <laughs> wow Locke is a masterful preacher Bruce Grenzer is a former evangelical pastor turned atheist who lives in rural Ohio. He says that the spread of conspiracy theories like QAnon in the evangelical church has been a long time coming. There was this increasing uh, adoption of national, white nationalistic thinking, starting with, you know, Jerry Falwell. Like my man tasted dick for the first time. I was like, I'm not looking back. This shit's too good. Yo, fuck this evangelical bullshit. <laughs> He's like, yo, what the fuck am I doing right now? Paul, well and Paul Weirich back in the, I guess, the late 70s with the moral majority, for example. And, you know, so they birthed this baby that, you know, when Trump, uh, you know, it, it, it came of age. They realized that the way to power was through politics. I was in one church in Southeast Ohio for 11 years. I uh, preached a certain viewpoint. It was certainly a, you know, we were a Christian nation. Bruce preached fundamental evangelicalism and conservative values for almost three decades. But by the late 1990s, his religious and political beliefs had softened and eventually left him completely. But even though he moved away from the church, conspiracy theories still found a way to his family. None of them are evangelicals except for my third oldest son, great kid, but was very non-political his whole life, never voted. And then in January of 2020, was, something changed. He has gone to a Southern Baptist church. He's told me that well, my pastor believes a lot of the same things I believe. He sees this otherworldly element working within the government now. When Biden got elected, all of a sudden, you know, Satan was sitting in the Oval Office. Do you feel like your son has been led astray? It's hard to sit by when someone espouses those things and there's really nothing you can do about it. Bruce's son didn't want to be interviewed and didn't respond to our emails. They don't see each other as much as they used to. I want to hope that there's going to come a point where he wakes up one day and says, this is not. Uh, the path I want to be on, but I, my fear is he's going to become more deeply involved in these things. He's not only an awesome son, but you know he's the father to my to my grandchildren, and they mean the world to me. Is everyone to see? 
You better know that America may fall one day, but it will not fall to Joe Biden. It will not fall to Nancy Pelosi. He sure ain't gonna fall to Cuomo. He's out. Can I get a witness right there? Ludicrousness aside, the genius and insidiousness of Q is that anyone can be a part of it, and you don't even need to call yourself a believer. People can regurgitate Q tropes until the cows come home while still claiming, with a straight face, that they have no idea what QAnon is. Even Trump did that. Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much, which I appreciate. Dude, this is so I lost my former Bernie fan, Latina mother, this bullshit. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, man. It's just fucking... It's just insanity, dude. I don't know. I don't know what to say other than... Fuck. I don't know how to fix this. Like, I, I just don't know. Because there's no... He's also right now. Talking about Joe Biden. Now he says he's hearing. Well, you know, if it walks like a duck, then walks like a duck. People call me a QAnon. Man, your prostate must feel good from all the people up your ass. What? Are you okay, dude? Like, oh, you're saying that like all the people are constantly up my asshole, like fucking me up. No, it does not feel good Conspiracy. at all. I ain't no cute, okay? I'm not in all that nonsense. I thought, I thought he meant like that is, you know, people are nice to me or something. Since I'm a truth seeker and a truth teller. And I'm very calculated with what I say. And so I'm very aware. Motherfuckers said I'm a truth seeker and a truth teller. Five minutes ago, there are tunnels under the White House, folks. Amen. There are tunnels full of dead babies under the White House. And everybody doing crack. <laughs> I'm a truth seeker. <laughs> oh jesus christ you're very self-aware i don't say things that i couldn't fight for if they sued me i say things that i have verifiable evidence or eyewitness testimony or pictures or a background and a narrative too i'm a little smarter than a lot of people give me credit for so you have evidence of, of biden being a pedophile and kamala harris being i can promise you that i say it from that platform just like when i said tom hanks is a pedophile it does not matter to me if people say dude why is a pastor doing this you know what i mean it's like why does not a single person ever stop and go kind of weird that my pastor is telling me that joe biden's a pedophile now the only time i've ever <clears throat> the only time i've ever been to like a like a church is i went to the first african methodist church in in la so i kind of don't know but like those guys were talking about a bunch of like fucking you know cool shit like they were just you know talking about how the american government's like very fucking racist and imperialist and stuff so that's my only experience with churches but i i suspect that like preachers are oftentimes not talking about how tom hanks is a pedophile and more so like you know be kind to your neighbor i thought that was like what the church was about churches shouldn't talk about politics uh pretty sure the church is like an incredibly political space. I'm almost certain that like, it's kind of like the most political thing. Did you not watch black mass? What? Coming from a California mega church, they subtly do stuff like that and intertwine it. Tunnels under the white house are literally talked about on Wikipedia. Yeah. I mean, there's guys having tunnels under the white house. Doesn't mean that there's dead babies in those tunnels, man. Yeah, it's called construction, dude. It's like saying, I saw roads. <clears throat> Secret roads leading up to the White House full of babies. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds kind of crazy. And you're like, well, there's literally roads, dude. Yeah, oh, it's just shocked to find out that there are evacuation tunnels under the fucking White House, dude. Tom Hanks is going to sue you. I wish he would. Why don't you show us the evidence? I don't have to show you the evidence. I will when time comes. <laughs> so you must also know that this is exactly what QAnon says as well, right? Uh, it doesn't matter to me what QAnon says. Everybody wants to paint you in a corner and say that you're a conspiracy theorist. The problem is the only difference between truth and conspiracy lately has been about six weeks. Yeah. Because now we need... So six weeks from now, truth will come out about Tom Hanks. Some new ones because they all happen to be coming to pass. Do you believe that the left is evil? Absolutely. 1,000%. Anyone involved 
Anybody that believes what the left believes is absolutely on the side of evil. And you say that to your congregation? Absolutely. Does it not concern you that when you're telling people that a large group of people are evil, that they might take it upon themselves to, to act on those Well, two words? things. Number one, Jesus did the same thing. And number two, there's no seat belts in that tent. They can leave anytime they want to. Nobody's keeping them there. What is keeping them there is that Locke is not only validating extreme ideas, he's anointing them. Giving them. I know the six weeks is a Facebook meme. It's like they always say six weeks later, like we're proven. It's like, no, motherfucker. It's been years and you're not proven on any of this shit. Like, for example, you know, Trump being fucking president or coming back to becoming president. Biblical truth. Could it be that you're wrong? No. Absolutely not. Not in this issue. Now, have I been wrong before about things? Yeah. Have I apologized? Yes. But in these massive issues, to me, they're like fundamental staples. Mm. And there's no way I'm wrong about them. But I just can't tell you, you know, when those Capitol Riders prayed in Jesus' name with evangelical sounding prayers, I think it was a stunning wake up call to a lot of evangelical leaders that we have an issue in our movement we need to address. Ed Stetzer is an evangelical pastor and the executive director of the Billy Graham Center at Wheaton College outside of Chicago. As far as evangelical street cred goes, Ed has more than most. And he's not surprised that QAnon is spreading in the church. What is it about the... Yeah, I wonder why QAnon is spreading amongst the evangelical church, dude. Maybe because, like, the entire worldview of the average evangelical is completely psychopathic, okay? Just absolutely insane that the world is going to end in this like thunderous rapture in the next like 40 years, by the way, before 2050, okay? Not even 40, 30 years now, sorry. And that Jesus Christ is gonna come back to earth and he's gonna fight fucking Satan in mega doo-doo, okay? And this will only happen if uh, this will only happen if, like, uh, Israel and all of that area is given to the chosen sons and daughters of God, the Jews, and uh, that uh, every single person that is a good evangelical pastor will get fucking sucked up into uh, space, heaven, and everyone else, including the chosen sons and daughters of God, the Jews, uh, that did not convert to evangelical Christianity, will fucking rot in hell forever. So, you know, that's what they believe. And that's fucking insane. It also happens to be one of the most active political, like, groups in this country. The Wahhabism and Christianity, it's like that, but also... That's precisely why they are susceptible to other, you know... It's like saying, why are anime fans into this other anime? You know what I mean? Like, well, it's, you know, if you like JoJo, you're probably going to like Baki, okay? It's fucking both anime. Evangelical Christianity is an anime uh, in itself, in and of itself. So when you add additional, like, animes to that, you're like, yeah, I'm fucking into this. This is cool. Evangelical movement that kind of lends itself to, to this form of conspiracy thinking. I think for people of faith, um, QAnon runs on the tracks that faith has laid. It appears that QAnon has latched onto some of the, the yearning and aspirations of evangelical yeah. Christians. Wait, hold on. Why would, you be, why would it be insane to think that Jesus will come back and kill 90% of the world's population with his flaming sword, dude? That's so weird. I know. For some change in culture and society, they feel that their views and their ideas are no longer welcome. And what happens when people do feel marginalized is that they find ways to push back against that. I'm, I'm curious about what you're hearing from, from fellow pastors out there about this. I think overwhelmingly pastors are not QAnoners and are concerned at the disproportionate presence of QAnon believers inside their churches. They ask me regularly, how do I address this in my church? If I, and particularly too, they've, they've been taught, we've all been taught in seminary not to 
um, politicize the pulpit and are trying to figure out how to address this in their congregations. I think it's a very real issue. So it seems that these kind of QAnon churches are cropping up more and more. Right. And I think cropping up is a, is a good way to put it. People are wanting their ideology to be reflected in their church, where prior times it was more uh, wanting their theology to be reflected in their church. But people are being discipled by their cable news choices, spiritually shaped by their social media feed, and the end result is they're saying, well, you know, if, if I believe this, I want, I want to hear this on Sunday. I grew up in church and he says, I love, I love when people say, we need to stop politicizing the pulpit. Dude, literally, what part of the church what part of the church does not revolve around like, you know, talk about how abortion is like a fucking murder or how like there is no that that doesn't happen. Explain to me what part of the fucking church does not do politics, dude, or even fucking historically. When politics and religion ride in the same cart, the whirlwind follows. Read my dune, read my dune quote, Hassan. My point is, politics and religion have historically always been intertwined. And uh, one is a tool for the other, so. Silly shit going on here. same stories i've always known they kind of are so similar to like things that are happening and it's like wow how do you feel about when he says things that you know joe biden's a pedophile or the left is evil is that something that is off-putting to you no not really when there's proof out there i mean okay pastor Locke is describing a biblical mm -hmm. showdown yes. right now yes. between good and evil yes you know he's he's described kamala harris as demonic yes or demon possessed yes he has said that joe biden is a pedophile yeah you know he describes this network of child trafficking tunnels yes. you believe this yes i do and it is demonic and i believe wholeheartedly in my spirit without anyone else telling me anything that trump will be back whatever that looks like in an effort to curb the spread of covid disinformation Locke has been permanently kicked off twitter but as his in-person attendance continues to grow so does the concern felt by folks like Bruce. I grabbed drinks with him and his friends, a current pastor and an ex-pastor turned journalist, to chat about what, if anything, could be done. So I feel like I'm stepping into a joke. A pastor, a journalist, and an atheist walked into a bar, and I'm not sure what the punchline is going to be, but... It's okay, we aren't quite sure either. <laughs> but, but so what do you guys think is, is happening in this moment? To me, it's a very fear-based faith structure. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And of course, the political structure is fear-based as well. There's always got to be an enemy that you're oh, fighting, right. whether it's Satan or the uh, evil leftists. There always has to be some kind of evil thing that you're fighting, because if you don't fight, we're all going to hell. There's a lot of identity stuff that's going on in politics right now. The issues of abortion and the issues of gay rights. And so whenever the Republican Party took a turn and started becoming more and more extremist, I think that everything... Dude, I love... I love, like, older... Midwestern atheists and, like, Southern atheists. Like, they're so... They wear it on their fucking face. You know what I mean? They're so aggro. It's like... Like, you can't... They can't just be, like, normal, you know? They can't just be like, yeah... No, I gotta wear a fucking trilby. You know what I mean? It's awesome. This was a bowler hat, but... It started to, to just snowball. If January 6th taught us anything, it's how easy that stuff can turn violent. Are you worried about what this might mean for the church? And the implications for the Christian church and its witness are substantial. And I think it, it is part of our responsibility. These are people that are part of our congregations. These are people that we would say are our sisters and brothers in Christ. And when we see them being led astray, we need to help bring them back. We're not gonna give in. We are gonna go forward and then we're gonna go forward.